This is session three of the Chester Step Test discussing the physiological rationale. So, principle one, there is a linear relationship between oxygen uptake and exercise intensity. So, as we can see on the graph with exercise intensity along the bottom and oxygen uptake, oxygen consumption on the y-axis, then as we exercise, if at each level we spend two to three minutes of each of those levels giving time for oxygen uptake and heart rate to increase then what we find is there is a linear relationship. We can plot the line and we can uh, estimate what the oxygen cost would be by the American College of Sports Medicine metabolic equations. So important this, we can measure it in a laboratory with oxygen uptake kit, but we can also measure the oxygen uptake at any given workload on say a treadmill or stepping without the use of oxygen um, kit, uh, but with using the ACSM metabolic equations. So for example, in treadmill walking, we can use this rather forbidding um, looking equation, but we can put into there the data that we would want for the various exercise intensities, say on walking on a treadmill at different speeds, or maybe the same speed, but increasing the gradient. So as an example, walking at three miles an hour on a treadmill at say 10%, then putting those values into that equation above, then we can show that the oxygen cost of that intensity would be 26.0 millilitres of oxygen per kilogram body weight per minute. We can do exactly the same with different types of exercise such as walking, running, um, and we can also do the same type of thing with stepping. So here would be stepping at 30 centimetres and again given two minutes at each level, each stage of say a step test, then we can see that the linear relationship between oxygen uptake and um, stepping rate um, is exactly as it was for the treadmill in terms of linearity. Again, we can calculate those values by putting the resulting uh, step test per minute into the, uh, and the step height into the equation above, and we can calculate that, say, at 20 steps a minute uh, on a 12 inches or 30 centimetres step, then the oxygen cost will be 22.1 mils per kilogram um, body weight per minute. Principle three is linear relationship between heart rate and exercise intensity. So what we can see here is the same idea if we're stepping or exercising for two to three minutes at each level, then the heart rate rises uh, and then the intensity increases, it rises again, etc, etc. And it will keep rising until we reach heart rate maximum where it begins to level off. But the important thing from the Chester Step Test point of view is that the linear relationship between heart rate and exercise intensity is between 50% and 80% of heart rate maximum. We can estimate maximum heart rate by a number of different equations, but the one most commonly used across the world these days is one that was designed by Fox in 1971, which was the heart rate max equals 220 minus age. We tend to use this for all age groups, but it's particularly useful for certainly for uh, age groups under 40. So we can put this data then onto the Chester Step Test graphical data sheet. So for example, stepping at level one with a 12 inch 30 centimeter step, the oxygen cost will be 17.4 mils. Level two, 22.1 mils. Level three, 26.7. Level four, 31.4. And level five, which is 35 steps a minute, the oxygen cost is 36.0 mils per kilogram per minute. So in this particular example, we have Jim Smith, age 35, 
whose heart rate max, 220 minus age, would be 185, and 80% of his heart rate max would be 148. So, if we were using the graphical data sheet to work out the results, then we would put a line across where heart rate max comes at 185. We'd also put a line across at 80% of heart rate max, because this is the level we'd be expecting to stop the test when Jim, or when the subject, reaches 80% of their heart rate max. If we then look at the data that we were collected on a gym, heart rate at level 1, 92, uh, heart rate at level 2, 110, 125, 144 and 153, which are in the boxes below, then we can plot those graph on, on the graph and we can see pretty much a straight line there. What we would then do graphically is put a line of best fit between those points, drop a perpendicular and predict aerobic capacity at approximately 44 mils per kilogram. So we'd enter that in the box below, and looking at the norms um, below, right on the bottom there, you can see that that puts the individual, uh, puts Jim, a 30 to 39 year old male, into the good fitness category. So that would be how it would be operating with the graphical data sheets. Fairly simple run the test, collect the data, the heart rate data, perceived exertion you can see as well on there and the perceived exertion at level 5 for Jim was 14, in other words moderately hard, so that is what we call a clean test. The heart rates are well recorded, good linear relationship and a good solid result. So just to summarise again, how does just a step test predict aerobic capacity? Number one, a step rate increases, so does heart rate and oxygen uptake. Heart rate is monitored every two minutes until 80% of max heart rate is reached. Plot the heart rates and draw the line of best fit up to heart rate max. Drop a perpendicular to predict aerobic capacity. And on the example below, we can see again a different example there where the data is put onto the graphical data sheet and the result is um, produced. Rating of perceived exertion again, just to emphasise that we tend to use this um, to make sure the individual really doesn't approach anywhere near uh, 17, 18, 19 or 20. What are the sources of error? Well, potentially, any submax aerobic capacity prediction test, um, particularly when heart rates are being used and measured, have standard errors of about 12 to 15 percent. However, we know that multi-stage tests, rather than single-stage tests, incremental protocols that raise the heart rate every two, three minutes, up to 80 percent of heart rate max, are much more consistently accurate than single-stage steady-state tests. The main sources of error are that heart rate max 220 minus age has a wide variability, certainly at least 10 to 15 um, beats per minute, if not more. The curvilinear relationship in heart rate and VO2 at near maximal effort, but more important possibly than those two are even poor stepping rhythms, people who fail to keep the correct rhythm, not stepping to full height on the step. Anxiety, we know that nerves can elevate the heart rate and give us a false result, but also poor test administration. So it's vital that the instructor, the tester, knows exactly how to administer chest to step test accurately. So in other words, the fitness test must be conducted by knowledgeable and skilled testers.